my gosh. I, I'm not even teaser, exaggerating. Teaser, drama. I'm, I wish I could exaggerate this, but this is the most <laughs> intense season okay. that we've ever had. What do you mean by intense? Um, I mean, are we expecting we tears? Oh, tears. Oh, like, tears oh um, pain and healing and facing our greatest fear. It's, it's, it's a lot. Like oh, dealing gosh. with my dad and my mom and how they've, you know, been divorced for almost 20 years, yeah. but they're still not getting along, right? Ever. Like my mother does want to be in the same room and that little struggle. I mean, this is stuff that every family <laughs> goes through. Yeah. Every family. And I'm going through a divorce. Yeah. I was going to ask about that. I'm glad you brought it up. Okay, good. I wasn't sure if it was safe. Oh, yeah, safe. Everything's safe. The safe room. Okay. The safe bubble right here. Yeah, right here. <laughs> On Facebook Live. On Facebook Live. I don't want to say talk to me about the divorce. That's a little depressing. Talk to me oh, about... I'm not depressed. You're not. You see this, you see this face? You do look I'm not, glowing I'm and happy. I'm so not depressed. Okay. My main goal going through this divorce is not to allow it to become my parent. Okay. That's very important for me. Yeah, I was um, going to ask about that oh connection. Oh, my gosh. It's so important because watching them and watching how all my friends and my relatives are going through a divorce, I'm like, I don't want that. Right. I don't want that. You've already sacrificed yourself. You've already paved the way. I don't have to go through that pain anymore. Right. You know, and then it's, it's okay to be amicable. Yeah. I mean, sure. I like him sometimes, and I know he hates me, but we can be amicable to the, yeah. to the kids because you have to... You can't be selfish when you're going through a divorce. Sure. You have to make sure you think about your children. Yeah, for sure, 100%. What mm -hmm. do you think it's been? I mean, obviously, I feel like last season was a huge growing process for you. So what would you say was maybe the biggest lesson that you took away from that? And maybe it's like heart lesson mm -hmm. or just life lesson in general. You know what it is? It's okay for me to be selfish. Yeah. It's all my life, I've never been selfish. I've always... I've always taken care of everybody in my family. I put myself on the back burner. Um, and a lot of people didn't really see those things because I'm not a bragger, so right. to speak. I don't sit there and say, oh, look at me. That's yeah. not me. Well, you're also known as being the responsible one. And you have, so, sometimes you don't want to be yeah. responsible. I have to be honest. You don't want to be sure. responsible 100% of the time. I mean, maybe 90, but, you know. Not a hundred. I mean, responsibility is kind of a burden as well, well right? You don't really get to, like, like is. lash, not lash out, but, like, live your best life all the time. Yes. Yeah. It's like too much is given, much is required. And sometimes sure. I don't want all that. Yeah. Um. So that that's the thing that I, that's, I would say that the main thing that I've learned from that is that it's okay to be in pain. It's okay to show people that you're in pain. Yeah. Um. Although there are some people that you can't show that to because that they'll use it as a weakness. Oh, and, they, and then they become weaker. And I'm like, oh, God, I have to forget about me. Yeah, and help this person helps you yeah. in that person at the time. Um, so that's what, that's one of the main things that I've learned. It's okay to be self. It's okay to put your feelings out there and your emotions. It's okay to be emotional. Yeah. Um, do you think that that was something that, I mean, obviously that's a learning process, but have there been, like, low points for you and, like, learning that it's okay to be, like, emotional or vulnerable? Like, was that something that you had to sort of, like, find within yourself? Yes. And also, you have to remember, everybody in my family has always been emotional. Yeah. So when they see me do it. I mean, you're all artists, so that makes sense. Yeah. But and that's why you guys put yes. out such great work. Because you're emotional. Yeah. But when they see me do it, they forget that it's me. They become narcissists. Oh, okay, you are right. You want to, oh, look at me. What about my pain? Right. Oh. So you're always ooh. the strong one. So, like, yes, when you have like, a moment, they're like, yeah, like you're fine. You're yes. always fine. Yeah. Yeah. Get over they yourself. They forget <laughs> things. Like, hello. Right. I'm actually human. Hate to break it to you Absolutely. guys. Absolutely. <laughs> so I shut down sometimes. Yeah. So I'm learning not to shut down. Okay. Um, in terms of like living your life in the spotlight, obviously you've got cameras following you on all of the time. How do you sort of like find you time? I mean, obviously you love to get your nails done, your feet done, that's your pamper time. Mm -hmm. But is there something that you do to sort of like zone out and maybe like find your find your chi or find your peace or is it going into prayer or I definitely go into prayer until my phone starts ringing off the hook. Right. Which I really, I'm telling you something. Let me tell you guys something. I don't work for Tony Braxton, okay? Right. She's not. I do not work for Tony Braxton anymore. <laughs> but I think she still thinks that I work for her. Okay. It's tough to break no, that cycle. No, honest to God, I really think no, she like, still thinks that I work for her right. because she was still calling me about things, and I don't mind helping yeah. sometimes. Mm -hmm. and I'm like, oh, hello. I'm not your assistant. Yeah. <laughs> it's 
probably just tough for her, though, because she's like, you're so reliable. Mm. You know everything, 100%, which, again, this sort of like segues into your other business, yes. the uh, personal assistant yes, school. The yes, the yeah. yeah. So, yeah. I mean, how's that going? It's good. It's, I put it to the side just for a second okay. um, because it takes so much of me to train. train and teach other people. But I have to be honest, sometimes when I see assistants, I cringe. Because I'm like, oh, what are you doing? Yeah. You know, I always tell everybody the, very, the number one rule when you get an assistant, the assistant needs to understand they are not your friends. They should not be sitting with you. They, need, they should not be eating with you. No, I mean, it's okay to laugh and kiki and be comfortable. Right. You have to have boundaries. Oh, God. And most assistants boundaries. get so comfortable, they don't, they cross over the boundaries. Yeah. I sort of blame social media a little bit for that. Right. And that's even before social media. No, they really? just don't care. It's like, okay. They're just happy to, like, be in the spotlight, mm-hmm. sort of, like, mm-hmm. in the background of the spotlight. But, like, Absolutely. Yeah. Sort of, yeah. like, leaving a lot of rules. Everything. Oh, As you should, sometimes. but this is why she's always calling exactly. you, because exactly you know why. why. Yes. yes, exactly. And you're like, girl, I've got to, exactly. to go. And when I have business right. I have to and take when care you of. Spend, when you spend the person that you're working for with money, spend it like it's yours. Don't spend it like it's theirs. Right. Like, don't, don't spend go, it like they have an amazing, like, incredible amount of it. Yeah. Exactly. Even if they do, don't do that. For sure. I feel like we're getting business lessons yes. here, guys. This is like a and well-rounded free. interview. That is free 99. Free of charge. <laughs> <laughs> free of charge. Um, it's Valentine's Day, it obviously. What's sort of, like, in the plans for you? Do you have dinner plans? Are you taking your kids out? Are you looking for love? Um, you know, I don't want to look for love. I want, I I feel want like it to find me. I get that. Amen mm-hmm. for that. I don't want to look for it, because if once you look for it, it's not going to last. Yeah. Just let it just kind of happen. Yeah, it's true. But you I don't think play. a woman should be found. Yes. We need to be courted again. Yeah. We don't that's get like not anymore. really a thing anymore. No. I have conversations with my friends about this all no. the time. Well, yeah, because there's like so many different like terms for whatever, dating like, or not, like talking, kicking. Aren't they though? I just, men are the new, most some men, y'all don't be mad at me, but some men are the new bitches, and if you're mad, that means I'm talking about you. Oh. You know what I'm saying? Calling you out, shots I'm just saying, just to be honest, they are the new bitches because it's like they want to be courted. Yeah. It's like, they want you to call them. No. I will say, though, that women have sort of had a hand in that, yeah, right? Yeah. Let's yeah. raise our hand. Yeah. Let's raise our hand. We did it. I'm sorry. I know people that did it. I didn't yeah. do it. I know you didn't do I, it. I did. We know it. No. <laughs> I have to be honest, because when, you, when you're in a relationship, you pamper, you spoil, you and then they become accustomed to their lifestyle. Right. And, then and you get used to not being pampered and You see what I mean? It's like, sure. I'm saying, okay, it's okay to treat me like this. No, I'm not doing that anymore. Yeah, for sure. But I have two rules. Okay, I what are they? I don't do trash. Okay. Like, I don't take out trash. Okay. And I don't put gas in my car. Okay. So when you pull up to the gas station, you're like, babe, yeah. handle this situation. Cause ain't, no, ain't no babe. How about my car needs to be filled with gas? <laughs> you just sit there. Here. We're here. Yeah, I don't, those do. are the two things I don't think girls should do. Okay. Um, I feel like this is getting good. Like, I want more love lessons. Um, in terms of, like, teaching your son and your daughter, like, how to court in general, or be courted and how to court since you have a son and a daughter, um, what is that process like for you? I mean, they're still young, so you're not really checking for it. I've taught my daughter at a very young age stuff that I know I can't say on Facebook Live, but I'm going to tell you a little later. Okay. Um, but I do tell my, I call my son package, I call it a motorcycle. Okay. And I always tell him, do not allow anyone to ride your motorcycle without a helmet. See? Now it's weak. Does that make sense, though? You have to always wear a helmet. For sure. And for my daughter, I tell her, don't open up your pocketbook for anybody. No, That's valid that. in a lot of different yeah. ways, though. Yeah, That's not just, like, bedroom etiquette. That is also just in general. Like, you should get used to being crap. Absolutely. You should pay for you. When it, you should never, as a girl, you should never pull out your mom yeah. when you're around guys. A friend of mine told me that. He's like a billionaire. And he was like, Twan, and I, we, we had dinner. If the billionaire is saying that, you listen to it. Absolutely. Because he's not hurting for any no. coin. For sure. But he was like, he's, he was just saying, we need to set that precedence again. Yeah. So he said, I said, I'll, I'll get it. I think he said, Twan, don't you ever do that again. Yeah. yeah. Especially. First of all, why were you pulling out your wallet with a billionaire? Because we were just friends. Okay. You know what I mean? I was and like, you're trying to give, like, people yeah, we'll giving. Yeah, we're good. I'm good. You're good. You're good. Right. You're good. I was like, here. He was like, I said again. He said, don't you ever. Right. Don't you ever pull out your wallet. He said, if you are a mental guy, a man, yeah. and you're pulling out your wallet, don't you ever go out with that person again. Okay. It has to be set. You know, Please whoever this man is, you need to stumble upon him. He's the one. He's a good friend. Hey, billionaire. That's, that's the best. Yeah. I can't even say that. That's set up. Yeah, Justin. <laughs> because he has one of those names. Okay. That everyone like, would know. Oh, my God. Yeah. And they're like, I'll take it with him. Yeah. Okay. 
All right, we've got to wrap it up. Oh, no! I know, oh, it's so God. fast. So fast. I want to know, obviously, since we're in New York, um, what is sort of, like, your ultimate day in New York? Do you have, like, an itinerary or something that you would absolutely love to do when you come here? I love going to New Okay. That's, that's romantic. That's my Eating breakfast at Tiffany? <laughs> I could just, I could be in Tiffany's like all day. All day. And here they have so many different floors. Right. I've been there forever. I'll bring a sleeping bag. It is. It's sort of a My diamond wonder. A the rich store. Okay. Well, thank you for coming thank in. You. This was so much fun. Guys, this is amazing. I'm so glad amazing. that you enjoyed it. Thank you for coming. Thank you for tuning in, guys. And make sure that you catch the show yes. in March. Bye, guys. There's like a lag, so you have to like stay.